We begin with that breaking news from the war in Ukraine. Russia declaring a limited ceasefire in two cities to the south and east of Ukraine. But reports now that agreement has already been broken. The civilian corridors were supposed to allow people to evacuate safely from the intensive Russian bombardment and the heavy fighting. But we are hearing from an official in Mariupol that the evacuation has now been postponed as heavy shelling continues. And because of a new censorship law passed in Russia just yesterday, some Western networks from CNN to the BBC to Sky News and our own ABC News team are not broadcasting from Russia as of now. An ABC News spokesperson saying, we will continue to assess the situation and determine what this law means for the safety of our teams on the ground. This, as Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in Poland for talks with top officials. We, of course, have team coverage of the story, and we're going to start with ABC's Matt Gutman in Lviv, Ukraine. Matt, good morning. Hey, good morning, Joe. I want to give you a sense of where we are. This is part of a sprawling checkpoint comp complex. You can see them loading those sandbags right behind me. Now, increasingly in this conflict, civilians in the crosshair, as you mentioned, that brief five-hour ceasefire in those two cities in the east. We hear there is shelling in Mariupol. Just heard from the president's office, Zelensky's people telling people, go back home. The evacuation is canceled. Get in your bomb shelters. This morning, that merciless Russian onslaught against civilian targets intensifying. Social media video showing an apartment complex in Chernihiv, north of Kiev, fires still smoldering. Survivors screaming and scurrying for cover. 47 people killed, according to authorities. The Russians also targeting a school west of the capital, gutting the building, charred textbooks amidst the debris. The Russians also taking the southern city of Kherson and focusing their fire on Ukraine's second largest city of Kharkiv. But early this morning, Russia reportedly violating a five-hour ceasefire in the hard-hit cities of Mariupol and Volnovakha in the east. Ukrainian officials now saying the Russians shelled the humanitarian corridor as civilians tried to flee. Authorities in those cities calling off the evacuation of civilians and urging them to get into bomb shelters. Overnight, Ukraine's president criticizing NATO for rebuffing his plea for a no-fly zone and saying all of the people who die from this day forward will die because of you. And overnight, Zelensky posting another video on social media, both proof of life and encouragement to his people, affirming he is still in Kyiv. Nobody ran away. We are still working, he said. I'm here in my place. NATO has accused Russia of using cluster bombs in Ukraine, which kill indiscriminately and are banned under international law. The suffering we've already seen is, uh, is likely to get worse before it gets better uh, for, for as long as uh, Russia pursues these methods. The U.S. and NATO are supplying weapons and diplomatic cover, condemning Russia for attacking this nuclear power plant in Zaporizhia. But the fire just 1,500 feet from the reactors was put out and no radiation detected. By the grace of God, the world narrowly averted a nuclear catastrophe last night. Meantime, Ukraine sabotaging bridges to slow the advance of a Russian column that at one point had been 40 miles long. It appears stalled about 17 miles from Kyiv. And everywhere in this besieged country, men and women joining a budding resistance. In a bomb-proof basement, these men learning the mechanics of AK-47s. Outside, guns pointed at this car. It's a dry run. Civilians learning how to operate checkpoints and spot Russian infiltrators. And these women learning the basics of combat medicine, how to carry the wounded and twist on tourniquets. Okay, and what kind of things are you learning how to do? Uh, to stop bleeding and then to... Uh stop blood loss and to uh, help the injured soldier to breathe. Now, President Zelensky calling on everybody here to help and civilians so critical in this resistance. I want to show you what they're using here. In addition to packing on these sandbags, this is an old Soviet mine. It has been rendered safe, but they hope to try to use it against Russian tanks should they advance. But across this country, they are losing hope that they can actually stall this Russian invasion. They say they can't keep fighting with old Soviet mines and Molotov cocktails. They need more weapons. They need more training. Wait. It's incredible, though, how people have stepped up to protect their own towns and cities. Matt, thank you. Well, hey.
Hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.